So Sonoff sent me this device that is the thermostat radiator valve and this device can maintain the temperature of your room by controlling the radiator valve. Now I had created a short video which I have linked somewhere here wherein I have shown you what are the various components that this device comes with. Now this is a Zigbee based device and we will connect it to home assistant using Zigbee home automation and Zigbee to MQTT. Now if you don't have home assistant itself set up, you can still use this device via this EV link app and I will be showing you how to do this entire setup. So with this, let's get started. So once you connect the batteries, it goes into this initialization phase. So this IN is like an initialization phase. Now let's connect it to the thermostat valve. Now after connecting it, we are going to press this button and it will go into this adjustment phase. So it will now understand the level of the valves and start this device. Now there are three ways that you can use this device. One is via the EV link app in which most of the Sonoff devices connect. Or you can do it this in Home Assistant via Zigbee to MQTT or via Zigbee Home Automation. Now first we will look into how we can do this using the EV Link app. If you are interested into the Home Assistant way of doing things, you can skip to the next chapter. But you can stick around and see what are the various options that this app provides. Now to use the EV Link app, you would need this Zigbee Bridge Pro. So Sonoff provides this Zigbee Bridge Pro. Let me open this right now. So I have this Zigbee Bridge Pro provided by Sonoff and this is the cable that it comes with. So I'm going to connect this bridge now. So right now I have connected the bridge and this blue light is blinking right now. So let's actually connect this first with our EV Link app. So for this, let me open the EV Link app and now here I'm going to click on add device. So now let's click on the quick pairing option and then here it will ask me to turn on location permission. So I'm going to allow the location permission right now. And here now I'll have to provide the Wi-Fi credential. So let me enter that right now. And now it's asking me for Bluetooth permission. So I'm going to allow this right now. So as you can see, it has already detected that it found this Zigbee bridge right now. I'm going to click on add here. And with this, the Zigbee bridge will be added right now. And now it's asking me for the Wi-Fi list. So I'm going to select the Wi-Fi for which it has to connect to. So let me click on that and I'm going to click on confirm. So now the bridge is going to get configured. So the bridge is now configured with our EV link app. Let me click on next and I'm going to click on next here and I'm going to click on done. Right now. So now with the bridge configured in our EV link app, what we have to do now is put our TRV into pairing mode. Now to put the device into pairing mode, you will have to first of all turn it off. So you will have to turn it in this direction and put it into off. And then after that, press and hold this. So once you now see this thing blinking like this, this means it has gone into pairing mode. So now once the device is into the pairing mode, what you have to do is click on this bridge and click on add device. Now it will actually start searching for the TRV. So let's wait for this thing to detect now. So now it is showing it found one device. Let's click on next. So if you see right now, the TRV that is a thermostat radiator valve is now seen here. So this is the thermostat radiator valve. It is now configured into this EV link app right now. So I can now increase this and this will actually change the thing on the device itself. You cannot visually see it because the light does not come on. You just have to turn it here based on the temperature that it has. So right now it is showing that it is at 25.3 degrees. That is what it is detecting it at. And then if I want to increase it, so this is right now set at 19.5. If I increase it to like 26, it will go into this heating state here. So that means it will now start heating your room to reach this temperature right now. And this is how it will automatically take care inside your app right now. Now let's look at the various options that this thing provides. So first of all, let's go to the settings here and here you can see the current version. So this is right now the latest version. You can always update it once the new version has been released. And then afterwards you can do a lot of device settings. Like for example, you can have temperature calibration. Like in case if your current temperature is different than what it is showing, you can increase the temperature here or decrease it such that it matches to your current room temperature 
and then after that there are certain things like child lock there's an open window detection here wherein it's something like if the window is open for five minutes then it detects it and turns off the radiator so that's how this thing works then we have this frost protection wherein if the temperature reaches like say for example five degrees it will turn on this valve even when the trv is in the off mode so these are some of the options that are present into the settings here. Now let's go to the smart schedule option and here you can set certain schedule on what time you want what temperatures of the room to be. So like for example here you can see like between 0 to 7 it's like set at 16 degrees then from 7 to 10 it is set at 19 and then that's how the temperatures are set. So you can always add a new interval here like for example I can add like at 1 o'clock maybe I want it at really hot temperature like maybe 27.5 I add it here and you can see that is from 12 o'clock till 7 it will be around 27 degrees so you can see the temperature with this colors here so this is the smart schedule that you can set over here so let me save this and let's go back here you can always increase the temperature with these buttons here and this will actually set the values inside the trv itself now the next part is this manual and auto mode right so in case of the auto mode if i move it to the auto mode what happens is this shifts back to the schedule that we have got so remember we have right now the schedule that is today is a saturday right now i have this schedule wherein at around eight o'clock in the night it should be somewhere around 19 degrees and that's what it is doing it is actually moving it back to 19 degrees if i move this i'm actually overriding it and i'm setting it manually so then it moves back to this manual mode right now. So now this is how it is done using the app. Now let's look at how we can do this into Home Assistant. So right now we are in Home Assistant. What we are going to do is we are going to go to settings now and we are going to integrate this device. So we are going to do this using the Zigbee Home Automation. So let's go into Zigbee Home Automation and in devices and now I'm going to click on add device. So now this will actually start searching for the TRV right now. So let's put this TRV into the pairing mode. So for this, you will have to turn it off by turning this wheel here. And then after that, you will have to press and hold until it goes into this blinking option right now. So as you can see, it has now start configuring the device right now. And it's being detected by Zigbee Home Automation. So let it now finish configuring the device into Home Assistant right now. So the device is now ready to use. I'm going to keep this name as is. I'm not going to change this. And let's go and visit our device right now. So when I open this device right now, we have this single switch here to actually put it off. And then after that, you can turn it on. And then we have this thermostat option here. So we have this option right now. It is set into the heating mode. We have this off mode and heating mode. So these are the two modes that we have right now. Off means that it will turn it off completely and in the on mode that is the heating mode is this option wherein we have right now set it to 19 degrees celsius so right now if you see in this wheel this spot tells you where exactly is right now the room temperature that it is detecting so it's detecting around 25.7 degrees celsius and this is the point so if i increase it further than this it will actually open the valves right now and start heating such that we reach to the desired 27 degrees celsius so what it does is here it will adjust your thermostat such that it reaches the desired 27 degrees celsius that it needs and this is how the valve will control your thermostat so now this is how it's been done using zigbee home automation now along with this here are some of the entities that are involved here so we can see the battery percentage like what's the percentage of battery that is there and then obviously you can change the settings over here now you can obviously have some automations such that you can set in what time at what temperatures that you can set for the thermostat itself so that can be done so this is the basic setup in case of zigbee home automation let's look at it how we can do this using zigbee 2 mqtt now so now again what we are going to do is we are going to put the device into pairing mode so for this turn the knob such that you put it into this off state and then after press and hold until it starts blinking like this so once it starts blinking like that click on permit join and then this will actually allow it to detect your device right now so if you see right now it has detected the device and it has started interviewing it so let it complete 
So the device is right now all configured here. It is supported into Zigbee 2 MQTT right now. And you can see that the manufacturer is right now soon off. Let me open this device right now. And here you can see the battery status, the current firmware version, and it is also supported into Zigbee 2 MQTT. Now, next look at what it exposes. Now here there are all the various options that we have inside the EV Link app. So a lot of these things like for example, the occupied heating point. So this occupied heating point is the temperature wherein it is set at. Then we have the local temperature calibration. So here you can set at the appropriate temperature, which it is right now at room temperature. So if your room temperature is right now like 24 degrees Celsius, then what you would have to do is reduce this value or increase this value such that you get this local temperature value here. So let me actually decrease this further such that we bring it to 24 and there we have it. So right now it has been calibrated to 24.6. You can reduce it further to actually reach the current temperature and then afterwards do the calibration that you want. Now along with this we have like this running state. So right now it is idle and then we have the child lock mode also and then we have this open window sensor also. So there's no sensor as such, like what it does is that behind the scenes, it just sees if within five minutes, if there's a temperature drop of 1.5 degrees, then it considers that the window is open and then it will turn off the radiator completely. Then we have this frost protection temperature here. So it is the minimum temperature at which it will automatically turn on the radiator, even if we have it into the off mode. So if we turn it off, this frost protection thing, once it reaches seven degrees, it will automatically turn on the radiator itself. Now there are a lot of other options here, like it's going to show you the link quality, the valve motor running voltage and all of these things. So now let's look at how this device looks like inside Home Assistant. So let me go back to Home Assistant right now and I'm going to go to settings, devices and here I'm going to go to right now here in the MQTT section. So in this MQTT section, I have these three devices and here we have the Zigbee thermostat radiator valve. If I see here, we have all the options that we saw to the Zigbee to MQTT interface and here are the various things that we can see. So here you can see the thermostat value. So I can increase this further. So right now it has started the heating because the current temperature detects it is as 24.6. And since I increased it to 26, it is right now heating. You have this various modes being shown here. You have this auto mode. If I set it to auto mode, then it will go into the schedule option. And then you can have the heating mode here. So the heating mode is actually the manual mode that you want to actually set right now. So this is how it works inside Zigbee to MQTT. Now you can create a lot of automations around this using this device itself as per what you want. There's this option even for this open window detection. If you want, you can turn it off. It estimates it that if there's a drop of 1.5 degrees within five minutes, then it will turn off the heating for you. Along with this, if you ever want to do this manually, like you can turn on this wheel over here and this will also set up the temperature that you want. So this will be like a manual way of controlling it. And this will also get updated inside Home Assistant. So if you see right now, when I turn this wheel, it also updates this on Home Assistant. Now this thermostat radiator valve that we have here, you can use this with Home Assistant and you don't need the Zigbee bridge here. In case of the Zigbee Home Automation as well as Zigbee 2 MQTT way of integrating, you would probably already have a dongle with you. Now in terms of the price, if you see this one cost like around 26 to 27 dollars, wherein in case of the other products like I have seen the Akara ones, it goes up to nearly 50 dollars. Now if you are having quite many of these devices that you want to install then i think this is a pretty good option i would say so it does actually what you need that is setting up the radiator at the required temperature so that you have a pleasant experience depending on the temperatures that you have set right now now if you like this video make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button and if you want to support this channel there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via patreon till then Take care and I will see you in my next one.